Now let us consider another example where f of n is equal to 2n square plus 3n plus 4. Here we can write the upper bound of this function as 2n square plus 3n square plus 4n square which is in effect 9n square. Okay, so here f of n can be represented as big O of n square. Now let us consider the lower bound of this function. For the lower bound of this function, we have considered just n square. 1 times 1 into n square, that is nothing but n square. So here f of n can be represented as omega of n square. Now clubbing this together, we can see that with the same time function of n square, we can represent the lower bound as well as the upper bound of this function f of n. So f of n can be represented as theta of n square. Now let us consider another example. f of n here f of n is equal to n square log n plus n. For this f of n we have considered the lower bound as n square log n and the upper bound as 10 times n square log n which is always greater than the given f of n. Since we are able to represent the lower bound as well as the upper bound using the same, same time function we can represent f of n as theta times n square log n. Now coming to the third example we have f of n is equal to n factorial. We know that n factorial is equal to n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 etc till 1. So here we can represent the lower bound of n factorial as 1 and the upper bound of n factorial as n square n raised to n. Okay. So here we can see that the lower bound is a con lower bound of this n factorial is a constant whereas the upper bound is represented using n raised to n. So that means f of n can be represented as big O of n raised to n whereas the lower bound of f of n is omega of 1. We can see that there is no tight bound for this function f of n which is equal to n factorial.